Wow, we have now completed quite a number of functions. And the previous one in section 10.4 was the exponential function. And we're going to start right there to see the connection of where we're going. We've covered quite a number of graphs and each one given us different details and used in the economic set aspect of it. And here we explore logarithmic functions. So first we wanted the function for an exponent is some value raised to the x. That's the parent function. Well, now we're going to uh, do the uh, inverse of that. And our first insert is that we start with the log and what it means. All right, so here we have, and we solved equations too, to saying a to the x equals some value. And they've written in this way so that now our y equals to the log of the base number to x. So now we're changing it to log of base a of x. So the outcome of log is the exponential value. that represents power. And I always mention it as the exponent. The outcome of a log is an exponent. Remember, if we had, and what they did here was y equals uh, a to the x. So the inverse means that we swap uh, for x and y. So therefore, we can have y equals the log base a uh, of the product y, because y becomes x and x becomes y. And so that's what we have. So let's review some things. I know it sounds confusing, but I'm going to make it as easy as possible. So we're going to start first with the properties of exponents. We said a to the n times a to the m equals a to the n plus m. And this was our product rule. Then we had a to the n divided by a to the m uh, equals a minus m, our quotient rule. All right, then we had a to the zero, always one. This is our zero rule. The, uh, oh, I left off my reciprocal. A to the negative one equals, sorry, these should be equals. Well, it is kind of still okay, but in this, in this of substitution, one over A, and that's the reciprocal rule. And I have the power rule, a to the m raised to the m is a to the n times m. Okay, and this is the power rule. Well, in logarithms, we have log of base a of the product which is our x, is equal to our exponent. So, 
if we have the log of product of n plus m, then we have the log of base a of n plus the log of base a of m, because the sum is that part right there. And you can see the distinct we had uh, times here, sorry. All right. So then if we have the log base A of uh, N divided by M, again, these are exponents. Then we're going to have the log base a of n minus the log base a of m. Subtraction. Addition and multiply, subtraction and divide. Now, uh, the other ones I don't translate because those are identities uh, primarily. So these are what we're having here. And I'll uh, reduce everything uh, as it gets better. All right. So Let's do some examples and get comfortable with understanding what we have. So uh, my base is 5. My exponent also 5. And the product is 3, 1, 2, 5. All right. So we want to write it as a logarithm. So we want the log of base 5 of the product equals the uh, power, the exponent. Right. And uh, we can check that. We can check it. And we're going to talk about that right now. So this is called a change of base. because it's not a base 10. So we're going to put the log of 3125 divided by the log of the base 5. All right. Log, log. OK. So I'm going to put the log is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 key log of 3. 1, 2, 5, close parenthesis, divided by the log of 5, which is the base. And we get 5. And that's what we said. All right, then. Let's clear that for the next time. So here we have convert to a logarithm. Well, we want to see if that is correct to begin with. And I didn't do that earlier. 2 raised to the exponent of negative 3, I get 0.125, which is 1 8, because I can do math frac, and I get 1 8. All right, so we got that. So what is my base? It's my exponent, negative 3, and my product, one eighth log of base of product equals uh, power. They call it a power, and I'm going to call it an exponent. So I'm going to write log of base two of one eighth equals negative three. Again, we want to check, look at that in the calculator. So now I'm going to put a uh, log of 1 divided by 8, close parenthesis, divided by log of base 2 is negative 3. All right. Now we get it. Now we get it. That's awesome. So we're going to convert this guy right here. And we get a 1. Now notice this is an identity property.
exponent to degree is the exponent. I mean, it's the uh, base. Uh, 3 to the 1 is that. So if I have 1, that's my exponent. So I want to change it to an exponential. So my base is 3. My exponent is 1. And my product is 3. So that makes it base 3 to the exponent is 3. Now we're going backwards, and that's pretty good. All right. So here we go with this one. Uh, this one says the log. And notice it doesn't have a base, so it is a base 10 understood. So if no base is given, it's a base 10. So we know 10 to the negative 3 is the product, right? So exponent negative 3 and the product is 0 or uh, 1 thousandths. So I'm going to write 10 raised to the negative 3 equals that. And we're going to test it right now with our calculator. 10 raised to the negative 3 is a thousandth. Very nice. We do that in scientific notation, which is why we do exponentials to begin with. So here we have some properties that I listed above. Uh, is a logarithm of base 4 Okay, so it's this one of three written as one or the other. Well, of course, the answer is log base four of three equals y in this case. All right, so here we have the properties. If it's multiplied by adding, if it's division, we subtract the logs. And each one is distributed with the log value. All right. So let's do some examples. Again, they, nothing difficult. So here we go. And we have some other conditions here. Uh, in looking uh, at this example here. So I want to look at that example log base 2 of the square root of 3 times x equals. Okay, so we have to first change to exponential form. So if I have a square root of 3, that means it can be written as 3 to the 1 half because the number here, the index is 2, and we're taking half of it, and that'll give us a square root of 3. So that's where they got the one half. Okay, so here I'm going to do this one over here. So this one changes to log two of three to the one half times x. All right, and that changes to log base two of three and a half and it's times plus log base 2 of x. Now, this is a power rule. On the power rule, we add it in the front. 1 half log base 2 of 3 is log the base 2 of x. Now it's fully extended. So they gave us this picture of what they uh, stated up here. And I want you not to be confused. Well, this one's easy. All right. So what this is, is log base 6 of 5 times k. So they want it to extend. It's multiplication, so we're going to add log base 6 of 5 plus log 
base 6 of k. And that's all of it extended. All right. So here we have this one, and this one's division. Division. <coughs> Excuse me. So we subtract. Okay, so this means that I'm going to write log base 6 of 6p, <coughs> excuse me, minus log base 6 of 7k. Now this takes care of my numerator and denominator. But in my numerator, I have a product. So I have to go log base 6 of 6 plus log base 6 of p minus log, I could write, log base 6 of 7 6 of k. Okay, now what happens here is, because I did it on both, and um, I know that this is 1, right? Because the power of 6 and 6 is 1 plus log base 6 of p minus distributive property log base 6 of 7. Now that's a, an unusual number, so we're going to leave it in that form. Minus log base 6 of k. And now it's totally I know it. So, now we have something interesting here. It's the application of rules. Notice that it says log base b of 2 is a and log base b of 3 is c. Use the properties of logarithms to find the following. Log base b of 9. Okay, well, this could be log base b of 3 squared, isn't it? All right, so we could write it as 2 log base b of 3. This is a power rule. Now, we know what this is by substitution. It's a C. So the answer is 2C. Right? Pretty cool. Now, what if you had said, not do that, just look at that. Log base B. What if you saw 3 times 3? Well, we would have what? Log base b of 3 plus log base 3 uh, b of 3 and all of them are c plus c to c. Do you see the beauty? Standing. Thank you. Now we have that change of base. In other words, if we want to what we do, and we've been doing it, uh, it is uh, the log of x over the log of a. Log of x divided by the log of a. All right. So in this case, we're going to have log of 8 divided by log of 2. And we could have written this like this, log of 2 of 2 to the 3, and that would give us 3 log base 2 of 2. Well, this is 1, right? So the answer is 3. But we want to do it by calculator. So here we go. Log of 8, close parenthesis, divided by log of 2, close parenthesis, and enter. 
three. Right. So we did it without the calculator and with the calculator. <clears throat> now, for any positive numbers a and x, a not equal to 1, because it has to be uh, a whole number, we have the log of base a of x equals ln of x over ln of a. In other words, we can just stick natural log anywhere we like, and it'll come out. So, instead of doing log of, four, of 30 divided by log of 4, we can do ln of x. So we want the natural log of 30 divided by the natural log of 4. And that's what we have. So we're going to do first the log of 30 divided by the log of 4. This is what we learned before. And get this number. Now we're going to do ln of 30, close parentheses, divided by ln of 4. And we get the same thing. So uh, again, mathematics is amazing that we can interchange uh, E, the idea of E, because E is natural log. Uh, and so uh, it can work out for both systems. Nearest thousands. Thousands is three decimals. All right, so look at this. Change of base theorem for exponential. So if we start with an exponential, we can stick E and put the natural log of A times X. Amazing, right? So um, uh, evaluate without a calculator. So we have a uh, natural log of two thirds, uh, E two thirds, and it's going to be two thirds because we have uh, ln, have two thirds ln of E, right? Because exponent can go in front. Now, ln of e is the identity. That's equal to 1. So therefore, the answer is 2 thirds. Now we want to do it. ln, and now we're going to do second ln, and in the, ex in the exponent, we're going to put 2 divided by 3. And parenthesis and enter. Of course, that is math fraction two thirds. So we did it. Nice. Solve for x. All right. Now, in this case, we can do change of base. Natural log. So I can say ln of 81 divided by ln of 27. All right. So ln of 81, which is, again, I could have, oops, sorry about that, 81. Divided by ln of 27. I get. Oh, there it is, ln of 27. Sorry about that. Sometimes my pen doesn't work. And I get, uh, okay, I'm going to do math frac. And I get 4 thirds. Well, what does this mean? All right. So we have log of 20 of um, 81 which is uh, 9 times 9 right 81 is 9 times 9 and we're talking 27 so it's um, 27 times because as a 3 
3, right? That's 81. Okay. All right. So that would mean the log of 27 of the 27 plus log of 27 to the 3. And this guy is uh, one third. So that, and that would give us the same. Okay. Solve the equation. All right. So in this case, uh, we can use, now we have a one as an exponent, so I can convert to, law, uh, to exponents. All right. So. All right, so that would mean I have a 4 as my exponent to the 1 equals 4 minus 1. So I add 1, I get a 5 equals 4x, x equals 5 fourths, or 1 and a quarter, uh, whichever way you want to go. So we're going to test that out. We're going to check it. So I'm going to put log parenthesis 4 times 5 fourths minus 1 divided by the log of 4. All right. Or I could do it hand wise because I have 5 minus 1 is 4. But we want to check it as we would. Uh, without knowing the mathematics. And we get one. There it is. So it is good. Good solution. All right. Now they want us to solve this one. Be sure to reject any values of x that is not in the domain of the ori original logarithmic expression. Give the exact answer. All right, so our first thing is to not expand, but condense. What's multiplication? Log of 4 of x plus 57 times x minus 6 equals 3. Now we're going to convert. 4 thirds equals 2. x plus 57 times x minus 6. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. It's an exponent. I apologize for that. 4 to the 3. All right. So 4 to the 3 is 64. Okay, um, so what do we have first? We know that x has to be at least, at least, because we can't do zero, product of zero, uh, so it has to be at least six or larger, and uh, 57 is kind of large, so let's see what we do here. Uh, how would we uh, approach this problem? A serious foil. And that's the only way I can do it. 64 equals foil. First outer, inner, less. X squared minus 6X plus 57X, right? 
And now I'm going to do, and this is going to be a minus here, 57 times 6, uh, 342. All right, so I'm going to clean it up. Uh, that's going to be a positive 51x, a, and, I'm a, uh, and a negative 342. All right, let me move this up. This is kind of like involved, but it's, you know, life is never fair. I'm going to subtract 64. So if I have uh, uh, 342 and I add six, 64 more, I'm going to get 406 negative. All right, so this is what I have. And now I've got to figure out um, what what will work, right? So I'm going to factor. Well, this guy right there, and it's a big number. Okay, so I'm going to do three, two, and I'm going to factor it and figure out what I can do with this thing. And I'm, uh, I'm going to try a seven. Sorry, 406. Why did I? I got the wrong one. Fifty-eight. Bang. And if I subtract them, because I want to subtract them to get, and I subtract them, because um, one's a positive, so this one's the positive and this one's a negative. So now I set each one equal to zero and solve for what X can be. This one's a good answer. I don't know. I know the seven will work because it's greater than six. And uh, the seven, the negative 58 makes it a negative 1. And this uh, this might not work. So I want to do, I'm going to put it in. A log of 4. Oh, I'm sorry. Clear that. I'm going to do log of the product, or ln. I'm going to do ln of, open for C, and I'm going to put in my negative 58 plus 57 times, and then I'm going to put my negative 58 uh, minus 6. Zip divided by ln of supposed to get a three and I did I did get a three so I think both of them work seven maybe the seven doesn't work I don't know so I'm going to do the second entry I'm going to put A seven. And let's see if I get three. So they both work. Both work. There you go. Um, again, use your calculator, make sure. So we want to solve this equation. So first we're going to condense it. So if it's plus, it's times. So we're going to change it to E. Right? Okay. So then, once we have that, 
uh, we're going to divide by 8. And then take the square root. All right. So now um, we're going to do the math. Second x squared gives us square root. We're going to do second e to the negative 1, close parenthesis. Oh, wait. Sorry, I don't need a parenthesis. Sorry. I need to go down. Divided by 8, making sure I... And so we're going to get... 0 0.21444 dot 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 and we want to round to four decimals well that's one solution and then if I have the negative we're going to try it out as well so we're going to put it in now uh, and it's a plus or minus right this is a square root Let's see which one works. Uh, ln of, uh, we have, uh, have that, or we can put in that. We're going to put in this. We're not going to get exactly one, but maybe we will put this in there. All right, because x is equal to that. Right, and then we're going to go over here and put plus ln of, and now we're doing eight times this thing. The root of second e. Uh, arrow side arrow divided by eight uh, and close parentheses. Oops, I forgot to close parentheses over here. Do that because if I don't close it, mm -mm -mm, I have a problem, Houston. So it's right there. Second, oops, sorry. Second. Insert, but parenthesis, second insert, and then, there you go, I got it. And I get negative one, bam, look at that. We got that. And I don't know if I can do the negative and get the negative. So we're going to go with the positive on the ln. All right, solve for x. Okay, so on this one, we can fill in on both sides. I'm going to do the multiplier. I'm going to divide by the ln of 3. An approximation. Of 6 divided by, oops, parentheses, don't do what your instructor does, ln of 3. Always close those parentheses or you get a wrong answer. Uh, 1.6309, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to do approximately, uh, let's do, uh, let's do four. Your instructions. Um, all right. 
approximate the expression in form of a to the x without using e. All right. So um, how would we do that? Oh, what? Well, e equals expand it, right? He's a number. So, e to the seven x, right? And, and this becomes a two because it's 2.17 blah 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 to the x. All right. um, and we can calculate that. Second E. Oh, sorry. Second E to the x. Second E, there you go, to the seven gives us this ugly number. I'm going to put six three. it is a two power of two kind of all right that one was tough even for me all right uh, let's do this last part and and through with the chapter rule of 70 and 72 using the formula a equals principal times one plus rate to the t so we can find the doubling time can be solved by using natural log. Log. The use of the rule of the rate is less than 5%, then use 70 over 100 R. If the rate is between 5 and 12, then use 72. All right. So these are very simple. All right. So we want to assume that it is compounded uh, and the price is doubling for an annual inflation rate. So it's 3%. So we're going to use rule of 70. And the rule of 70 says 70 divided by 100 times 100 times the 0.03. And this will give us that uh, rate. All right. And uh, we're going to use the formula and then use the log. Not doubling time. Formula for doubling. Uh oh, my pen stopped. Uh, let me see. This one, the rule would give me. Let me see. No, it's. Good. 